the, the reason that I think this conversation uh, ends up being a little frustrating is because uh, the focus entirely is on Washington process. And yes, I have said it, that is an ugly process. It was ugly when Republicans were in charge. It was ugly when Democrats were in charge. This is and the, one and the, and the reason of the U.S. economy, but, though, sir. Uh, uh, sir, and, and Brent, let me, let me tell you something. The fact of the matter is that for the vast majority of people, their health care is not going to change because right now they're getting a better deal. The only thing that is going to change for them is, is that they're going to have more security under their insurance and they're going to have a better situation when it comes to if they lose their job, heaven forbid, or somebody gets sick with a pre-existing condition, they'll have more security. So how but can so, you, so this, so the notion, you guarantee so that they're not going to they're going to be able me, to keep their doctor? Right, you got to let me finish my answers. But sir, they, uh, I know you don't like the filibuster. I, it, but well, I'm trying to answer your questions, and, and you keep on interrupting. So so let me let me be clear. Now. You, it, you keep on repeating the notion that it's one-sixth of the economy. Yes, it's one-sixth of the economy, but we're not transforming one-sixth of the economy all in one fell swoop. What we're saying is, is that for the vast majority of people who have health care, they're going to be able to keep it. But what we are saying is, is that we should have some basic protections from insurance company abuses, and that in order for us to do that, uh, we are going to have to make some changes in the status quo that we've been debating for a year. This notion that this has been not transparent, that people don't know what's in the bill. Everybody knows what's in the bill. I sat for seven hours. Mr. President, you with, couldn't I tell said, me what the special said, deals are that are I in or said, not today. I, I just told you what was what Is was Connecticut in? in? Connecticut, what are you specifically referring the to? $100 million dollars for the hospital? <laughs> Is Montana in for the asbestos program? Is, you know, Listen, there are people, this right. is real money. Absolutely. People are, are worried about this stuff. And as I said before, this, the final provisions are going to be posted for uh, many days before this thing passes. But Let me get to some more specifics well, on substance, not process. The only, thing I, the, only, the only thing I want to say, just to, to close up, is that when you, when you talk about one-sixth of the economy, this is one-sixth of the economy, that right now is a huge drag on the economy. Now, we can fix this in a way that is sensible, that is centrist. I have rejected a whole bunch of provisions that the left wanted that are, uh, you know, they were very adamant about because I thought it would be too disruptive to the system. But what we can't do is perpetuate a system in which millions of people day in and day out are having an enormously tough time and small businesses are getting, sending me letters constantly saying that they are seeing their, their uh, Premiums increased 40, 50 percent. Mr. President, you said Monday that uh, you praised the Congressional Budget Office numerous times. You also mm -hmm. said this. This proposal makes Medicare stronger, and you just said it to me here. Right. That makes coverage better, makes its finances more secure, and anyone who says otherwise is misinformed or trying to misinform you. Right. The CBO has said specifically mm -hmm. that the $500 billion that you say that you're going to save from Medicare right. is not being spent in Medicare, that mm -hmm. this bill spends it elsewhere right. outside of Medicare. So you can't have both. You either right. spend it on expenditures or you make Medicare more solvent. So which is it? Here's what it does. Uh, on the one hand, what you're doing is you're eliminating insurance subsidies within Medicare that aren't making anybody healthier but are fattening the profits of insurance companies. Everybody agrees that that's not a wise way to spend money. Now, most of those savings go right back into helping seniors, for example, closing the donut hole. When uh, the previous Congress passed the prescription drug bill, what they did was they left a situation in which after seniors had spent a certain amount of money, suddenly they got no help and they were stuck with a bill. Now that's a pretty expensive proposition, fixing that. It wasn't paid for at the time that that bill was passed. So that money goes back into Medicare, both to fix the donut hole, lower premiums. All those things are important, but what's also happening is each year we're spending less on Medicare overall, and as a consequence, that lengthens the trust fund and its availability for seniors. Your chief actuary for Medicare mm -hmm. said this, that cuts in Medicare, quote, cannot be simultaneously used to finance other federal outlays and extend the trust fund. That's your guy. No, and, and what is absolutely true is that this will not solve our whole Medicare problem. We're still going to have to fix 
Medicare over the long term. Because it's $38 trillion Absolutely. in the hole. Absolutely. And that's the reason that we're going to have to, uh, that's the reason I put uh, forward a fiscal commission based on Republican and Democratic proposals to make sure that we have a long term fix for the system. The key is that this proposal doesn't weaken Medicare. It makes it stronger for seniors currently who are receiving it. It doesn't solve that big structural problem, Brett. Nobody's claiming that this piece of legislation is going to solve every problem that's been there for decades. More what it does do is make sure that the trust fund is not going to be going bankrupt in seven years, according to their accounting rules. So you don't and buy the, the CBO the meantime, or the actuary, that no, you can't have it both ways, no, that you can't spend the money what, twice. What, what is absolutely true, and, and what I do agree with, is that you can't say that you are uh, saving on Medicare and then spend the money twice. What you can say is that we are going to take these savings, put them back to make sure that seniors are getting help on the prescription drug bill instead of that money going to, for example, insurance reform. Now you call and this deficit neutral, but you also set aside the doctor fix more than $200 billion. People look at this and say, how can it be deficit neutral? Brent, the, as you well know, the doctor's problem, as you mentioned, the doctor's fix, is one that has been there for years now. That wasn't of our making, and that has nothing to do with my health care bill. If, if I was not proposing a health care bill, right? Let's assume that I had never proposed health care. But you wanted As, to change Washington, Mr. President, uh, Brett, and now uh, Brett, we're doing it Brett, the same let, way, right? Wait, Brett, let me finish my, my answers here. Now, if suddenly you've got, over the last decade, a problem that's been built up, and the suggestion is somehow that because that's not fixed within this bill, that that's a reason to vote against the bill, that doesn't make any sense. That's a problem that I inherited. That was a, that was a problem that should have been solved a long time ago. It's a problem that needs to be solved, but it's not created by my bill. And, and I don't think you would dispute that. I'm getting the wrap-up sign here. Yeah. Can you be a transformative president if health care does not pass? Oh, well, I think that, uh, look, I came in at a, uh, at a time when we probably had the toughest economic challenges since the Great Depression. Um, a year later, uh, we can say that uh, although we're still a long way from where we need to be, that we have made the economy stronger. It's now growing again. We have uh, so, uh, created a financial uh, situation that is vastly better than it was before. And so we're now in a situation in which the economy is growing, moving, and we're reforming areas like education. We're taking steps on energy. Uh, we're doing a whole bunch of things out there that are going to create the foundation for long-term economic growth. So if it doesn't and, pass, does it diminish your presidency? Well, if it doesn't pass, I'm more concerned about what it does to families out there who right now are getting crushed by rising health care costs and small businesses who are having to make a decision, do I hire or do I fix health care? Th that's the reason I make these decisions. Look, Mr. President, the, I'm getting wrapped the, up and I don't want to interrupt you, but to, to finish up, do you think this is going to pass? I do. I'm confident it will pass. And the reason I'm confident uh, that it's going to pass is because it's the right thing to do. It, look, on a whole host of these measures, whether it's health care, whether it was fixing the financial system, whether it was making sure that we passed a recovery act, I knew these things might not be popular. But I was absolutely positive that they were the right thing to do and that over time we would be vindicated in having made those tough decisions. I think health care is exactly the same thing. You know, we've, I've got a whole bunch of portraits of presidents around here, starting with Teddy Roosevelt who tried to do this and didn't get it done. Uh, the reason that it needs to be done is not its effect on the presidency. It has to do with how it's going to affect ordinary people who right now are desperately in need of help. I apologize for interrupting you so uh, much, sir. Okay, I was trying to get the most job. for our buck here. Uh, thank you very much thank for you your very time. Much. I appreciate it.